took the home farm. He was only 12 at the time. And then they took him. When he was playing under 17, home farm minors were playing in the FEI Minor Cup final. And Liam was brought on to help them because he was such a good player that they, he helped to threaten the team. It was one day then, uh, he was playing at home farm and he said he'd come in and he was gone. I said, are you playing? Oh, where are you going? And he says, I'm playing tonight. I said, how, how are you, who are you playing for? He says, I'm playing for the AUL team. They're playing Merlion Rovers in an important match. And I'm, play, I'm playing it, he says. And he says, um, Vinny Ryan is playing in the match with us. Vinny Ryan was, in the same, was a young lad like him too. And he was all the talk in the papers, Vinny was. And Vinnie Ryan was Celtic, Vinnie Ryan was United. All that was going on about, uh, and um, this wasn't the mention of Liam, but I went up to watch the match in any case myself as usual because I never missed a match that Liam played in home farm that I can remember from the time he was 14. Myself and my brother now, boy, Michael, we used to spin out to wherever he'd be, no matter where it was. And uh, I went up to home farm that night and they were playing Marion Rovers. And as usual, he was great. And then Bert Wally, who later died in the crash too, he was there with them and uh, he was watching for Vinnie Ryan. Because Johnny Doherty, who was, a, uh, who was on the, the Irish, the, the United first team, was also eligible for the youth, for the youth team. And he got injured. And they needed somebody very much for the youth team to take his place. And you see, they, they're taking an awful lot of the youths over there, the youth matches. And they wanted somebody good to replace him. So Bert Wally went over to watch run the rule over Vinny Ryan. And at half time he turned to Billy Bean and he says, forget about Ryan for the moment, he says. Suddenly, get that lad wheel, and he says. But I was in bed that night and the next thing something shook me on the shoulder and I looked up and it was Liam. And I said, what's wrong? He said, can you come downstairs for, for a while, he says. I said, what's wrong? He says, there's someone here from Manchester United. I said, well, it's about bloody time. That's exactly the words I said. So I got up and uh, I had no dressing gown at the time, I put an overcoat on me. And down I went and I sat down and it was Billy Bean, the United Scout, the famous United Scout, and Tom Smith, who was the main, uh, main uh, coach in Home Farm. And he was looking after Liam's team. And uh, I looked at Tom and I said, what's wrong, Tom? He says, this is Billy Bean, he says, Manchester United, and I shook hands with him. He says, uh, they want Liam. So uh, I said to Billy Bean, so what way do you want them? If this is a trial, I said, I'm not interested in it. He said, no, we want to sign him full time immediately. He's going over to take his place in the youth team. So I turned to my mother and I said, well, I have no objections. So um, I said, he can go, uh, if you want to let him go, I said, I won't say anything. So, um, she looked up at Liam, you know, and uh, I always get upset when I hear this, thinking it's part of me. She says, well, I suppose we'll have to let you go, she said. That was on a Friday evening, Friday night. And that Sunday night he was gone away. I remember after the, after the cup final, we went back up to Manchester around that time and they were playing Blackpool. And Stanley Matches was the player of the day at that time. And uh, it's, it's well, this is a well-known fact and it's in print. And Matthews was a great dribbler and that sort of thing. And he went by Roger Bourne, the left fall. And he didn't figure come around by him and took the ball off his toe and it was Liam. And it was down at the corner flag and Liam just started pushing the ball towards him and pulling it back and pushing it. And this is through to God. And if he's at that for a few seconds and the crowd just stood up and he just stood and then nutmegged Stanley Matthews, who was the prince of dribblers, and he nutmegged him and away he went and the crowd just went, go on, Billy, show them what ball playing is all about. That's what they showed. And this is Stanley Matthews, the, the most, well, most well-known footballer in the world and he, he done it that day. 
we had no phone at the time, you know. And there was a woman next two doors from us, Mrs. Farrell, and she had a phone. And we would never, we were always a bit reluctant to put her to a problem, but he, if there was something important, he used to ring. <laughs> and he rang that, that day, and I went in, and I got the medal, and he was telling me about it, and he was telling me how he played and all of that. And then he said, I scored again. He said, I scored it again. This time he says, so he said, we're off now, and that, that's it, you know. So it was, it was um, so thrilled, you know, of it. They were reckoned the best team in England, and here he is, and he's over there. He's the, he's the playmaker, and, and he scored goals, you know, for them. Thank you for the days, those endless days, those sacred days you gave me. I'm thinking of the days, I won't forget a single day, believe me. I bless the light, I bless the light that lights on you, believe me. Now you're gone. You're with me every single day, believe me. Days I'll remember all my life. Days when you can't see wrong from right. You took my life, but then I knew that very soon you'd leave me. But it's all right. Now I'm not frightened of this world, believe me. I wish today could be tomorrow The night is dark It just brings sorrow Then it rains Thank you for the day Those endless days Those sacred days you gave me He, 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 I'm of he was always wanting to be home to, He said to me, I remember him saying to me one time I wish my whole life was this was all was over now and I was going home again and uh, that, that stayed with him for many years, the homesickness. But one of the things that did help him then was, which helped him a lot, was my pal, Sean Dorton, who lived next door to me on Fossil Road, his brother lived in Stockport, and he used to work. He was a manager for a canning factory that was owned by Louis Edwards. I was, we were up when I was over one time with Sean, my pal, and uh, we were up to Brendan's place. And we were there, and we had a, a lovely big stew bid had made for us, and Liam was tucked into it. And um, when when we were finished, when 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 it was finished, and you know, we were going and bid Brendan's wife. They had a lovely big house in Stockport, a lovely big. Uh, and then um, she called me, Christy. She says, "Did you see Liam eating that stew?" She says, oh, "I said so. It was great. So you tucked into it." She would he like to eat more of them? I said, how do you mean, bitch? She would he like to come and stay with us? I said, Jesus, I'm sure he would. But she asked him, and if he wants to, we can get, just let me know. So I, we were going into town, and Sean was with us, and uh, I stopped. So how do you get? Uh, what do you think of the dinner there today? See, it was like mommy's, wasn't it? See, and I said, that's right. I said, would you like to live a bit, and Brandon? Uh, they two lovely children, Elizabeth and Michael. And he said, oh, I'd be grand if I could live with them. I'd be grand, he says. I said, uh, well, you can if you want to. He looked at me and said, what do you mean? So Bid wants to know, would you like to go and live with them? Did she say that? So I said, yeah. Oh, that's great, he said. So it helped. But unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately there wasn't that much time left before. Being, but uh, it helped, and he was great. Used to help because used to bring the two kids to the pictures and all that sort of thing, and it, that like it was more back into a family life for him. Yeah, and at last it had come that he, he was going to play for Ireland, you know, and uh, it was it was away, unfortunately, but um, he was playing. And Con Martin, who was one of our idols at that time, I think, was playing and it was Con's last international. And it was Liam's first, and we, we always remarked that. But he had a very good game, and we had the right up of it upstairs. He played very well in it. And uh, like it, it was what we had uh, we were wanting and looking forward to all the time was for Liam to be playing for the international team, you know. Liam went on to earn three more caps for Ireland, mm. two games against England and one against Denmark. 
Is there any particular game out of these three which really stood out for you? Oh, the, oh, the international and daily ones, naturally, because he had a great game that night. Because it was a great match. And uh, even we 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 didn't we lost the the qualification in the last few minutes by England equalising. And that, but he, he he was brilliant that night as well. He he, he was brilliant uh, 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 playing playing in it, uh, uh, and uh, we we we. We were all down at the crowd. My mother was in the stand. There was, a, I think, he got two tickets or something, two stand tickets. We were all there in the back of the goal, and uh, it, one time he came, he came up and there was a corner, and he looked over this way and he waved to us all. He knew where we were, where we stood, you know, and and he waved to us all and, and that. It was a magnificent uh, thing, you know, and, and he loved being at home. And as I'm telling you now about. The children on the road. And one there was a little girl, Doris Cochran. And they used to, when they see, they heard that they know he was home, they'd go in and knock at the door. That's the truth. And uh, this uh, Liam coming out, and he used to say, yeah, and they, You can find a match, Liam. Yeah. Okay, how, have you a ball? And they say, No. You know, here, go up the bridge and get a ball. And they used to give them, there wasn't plastic, there were uh, rubber balls at that time. And uh, he used to say, go up the bridge, go up the bridge and get a ball and I'll be out shortly. And that's the bridge now that's named after Liam. Because that's what the, we always called it the bridge where the shops were. And it was, that bridge was so much in his life. We used to have to go over to go to school every day and come back. We used to go over to go to the shops and go to the matches and all. The bridge was really, uh, uh, and, and that was, it was, we never regarded it as a corner street bridge, it was just a bridge we always called it. But he used to go out and he'd be playing ball with them on the road. And on one particular occasion, Belgrove Football Club had run a, uh, had organised a big five-a-side tournament in Dalyman Park. And they run it over two nights. And it was packed both nights. They, they said that the, what they made on the first night covered all their expenses and they, were on, and they were on whatever they made the second night was near enough to, to make them money. And they had an inter, international teams in all, but Liam had, a, a, had asked the boss, could he go over, could, they, he'd been asked, could he bring a team over, and he, this, he said certainly. So he had Albert Scanlon, as I say, Eddie Combe and Ray Wood, and, uh, and but, um, they were, they were playing in it. And the first night they won, won fairly comfortable, the two matches. The second night they were, we were, they were playing, and Lee was out on the road playing ball with the kids. It's the truth. And, and he was uh, out on the road playing ball with the children. And my mother says to me, Christy, she look, it's getting, I look at the clock, she is getting a bit. So I said, OK. And I went out and I said, uh, Liam, so he's getting a bit on now, Mammy's told me he's getting a bit concerned. Oh, she went, OK, he says, last goal, the winner. To the, to the children now, he said, last goal, the winner. And away they went, and they played, and, they came out, and he came in, running in, and um, he just changed his shoes, I think, and had a quick wash of his face, and ran down to Daily Road. Ran down now to Daily Road to be on time. And... Uh, he came home that night, he was staying with us, and the, the boys were all down in the Gresham with the, uh, the staying. And he, he came home, and, um, and he said to me, Mona, he said, why are you thinking that, Matt? She said, sort of think of what? Why do you think of it? He says, two hot tricks in the one day. And she said, what are you talking about, two hot tricks in the one day? She said, I scored a hot trick out in the road here, he says, playing with Nora, he says. And I went down to Daly Mount, he said, and I scored a hot trick against Ava Darcy. For Rovers, that's, and he scored, and that was the type he was, and the, he was always so well liked in Cabra. In, 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 in 1957, you know, I, I remember that Ireland had, for the first time, had qualified to play in Europe. And Rovers were the team at the time, they were a magnificent team here, we used to go and see them ourselves, even though you'd be playing senior football yourself, you still go and watch them. But I remember uh, a fellow work on the cotton to, to Liam one time and saying, are you ever going to come over and play these Rovers fellas that think they can beat us? And he said, the words he said, well, well maybe we'll draw them in the European Cup. 
and truth to think that he threw them in the European Cup. And they, it was all the talk then for the couple of months after the draw of, of um, Rovers going to be playing against United. And uh, it, was, it was great, it was great excitement about it and it was a great thing. And it was a great, um, it was a great, um, uh, what would you say, Atmosphere. belief in Rovers that they could compete with them. And fair enough now in the first half in that match they did. They played, they played very well and they could have scored. But once United got the first goal in, Tommy Taylor scored the first goal. That was it. This, the, in the second half, then they came out and they went to town all together on them. Liam scored twice and, and uh, he was magnificent that night, and the reports and all say it. But Rovers uh, done what they done as best they can, they could. But you see, the full time professionalism and training and all towards the second half, the, the last part of the match, that he's out. But it, it was a great performance by United. They showed how worried they were. The Busby Bay was the top team in it. And Liam was one of the, one of the shining lights of it. Now, I remember uh, when we were over for the 50th anniversary here a while ago, two years ago, and they were talking about the players who had passed on and who had retired and that sort of thing. And Nobby Styles had the job of speaking about Liam. And he says, you see, well, the one thing we do, or we'll, we have to say about Billy Whale, and he says, his, he was such a great lad, he said, and all like that. And then he says, as a player, he says, he was unique. He says, he scored 27 goals, he says, in one, year, in one season, he says. And he was the fellow that was supposed to be making them for the others, he says. He was the main playmaker for that team, yet he could score 27 goals. He was something extra, something different. He, he liked to have, keep himself involved with the community and, and what have you. Particularly, and, and especially people like that now. And uh, he would, um, if he was off duty now, and uh, up near, up close to us where Bachelor's Factory is, where the Cabinet Station is now, there was what the pitches we called Broom Bridge. And we used to go up there on the Sunday morning, John and I and the bikes, and to watch matches before we go to a match. Now, if he was off, he was home or anything like that, he would come up with us and he would sit, whoop, and he'd stand on that walk from the side, watching Grand United playing or Bagsborough or one of them playing, you know, and uh, have a chat with the fellas and all before and that uh, kind of thing, you know. And then, um, and if he wasn't sure of someone, he'd say, who was there? And I used to say, Jimmy O'Neill or something like that, you know, I give him the, and he said, how are you, Jim, and, and that, and uh, they always make you feel as if he knew he was talking to you all his life, you know, that was his style, you know, it was great that way, but he loved coming home, mm. he loved, he loved, he always wanted that, and always, uh, and uh, he said, as it was now, uh, if he wasn't playing, and they were playing away, he would ask her to take her home, which he did on a few occasions. And he, he did ask, could he come home before the crash? And the boss said, well, he said, he said, all the lads are coming. He said, you'd be better off if you came, he said. And that was it. I, I think the boss felt the fellow never got over that saying that, you know. But anyway, that was it. It didn't happen. He wasn't allowed to come home. And that's it. God knows his own ways. Liam's mm. funeral was attended by thousands. Thousands upon thousands. It was, it was never. Uh, it was a full, went down for a full week before he came home. When um, I had all the arrangements to do, and uh, was, I was the father, my old father, I, I was uh, like, I was 27 at the time. And, um, he, uh, I, I was down, I was my pal Maliki he used to, he used to go everywhere, but I remember going up to the graveyard, they sent for me, and I went up to the, went up, and he said, Christy, we have a problem about where Liam is going to be buried. And I said, what's wrong? He says, where you want to bury him? He says, it's not 
not good, he says. He says, I said, what's wrong? He said, will you come over with me? So I said, okay. And we walked over with him over, to, and he showed me in, in the, when you come up the, the, the pathway, we were in, well in, and all graves all around us. There is one small path. And he says, if we bury, go to bury Liam there, he says, in with your family. So that's what my mother wants, him in with the family. If we put him in there where the family is, he says, every grave around here, he says, is going to be knocked down or smashed, he says. It's because he said, this, whether you like it or not, he says, is going to be thousands upon thousands of people here for this. Said, I said, I see. So I said, uh, what, what do you think? So he brought me down and he showed me the path coming in. And there's a nice spot there just when you're coming in. He said, there's a lovely spot there, he said. And he says, the pathway will help to keep the crowd away from graves and all of that. And the kids. and then um, I said, well, that's, I said, I'll have a chat with my mother, but I said, I see what you're getting, what you're doing, I said. He says, will you let me know then as soon? So I said, I, I, okay, I said, I certainly do. And uh, he said, that's a lovely spot. And he says, I'll tell you what you, 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 would, you would like, he says, and your mother would like. He says, when we're all well, well dead and gone, he says, there's people going to be coming up here and they're going to stop and look at that statue and that, of the Blessed Virgin, and they say, oh, no, that's where Lee Whelan is buried. Do you remember the lad that died? And, and that's, he was right. Because still, it happens to this day, people pass the bridge and stop, and they look, oh, look, there's, you know. And he said, as we saw, I went back to, went home to my mother, and I had a little chat with her, and she says, well, I suppose if that be the reason, he says, we'd go for it. So that's where we picked on that spot, and that was the problem, because if you ever see photographs now of the funeral, from the airport with people at the side of the road and from, from Whitehall right down, there was uh, lots of people on the sides of the road, both sides of it right down. And uh, there was a big, big, big crowd at home farm, naturally, and all the boys were out in their gear, football gear, with a big, big uh, guard of honour kind of thing. And we went all the way down to Arcestry down to Condor Road, Darcet Street, all up North Circular Road, up to Cavalier Road, and there were crowds on each side of the, uh, each side of the road, all the way and into the church. You could hardly see the church rain, rain as a gaze with the crowd that was there. So that was it. There you are.